guys. How are you? Good. Yeah. First of all, that's an important day. Well, that's it feels like Monday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. Okay. Uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome everyone here. Uh, a little different venue tonight. For those who don't know me, my name is John Rowan, and I'm the inspector and I'm the commanding officer here at the Third Precinct. With me from the precinct, I have Deputy Inspector John Sumwalt. I'm um, also from the police department. I have Chief of Department Stu Cameron and uh, Inspector Bill Doherty, who's the commanding officer of our police if, if police technology bureau. Uh, also tonight with us we have State Assemblyman Philip, Philip Ramos and Legislator Sam Gonzalez. Oh, and, and Legislator Burr. So uh, what we're going to do tonight, the reason we're here at the library is because we want to start off, Chief Cameron's going to speak about the license plate reader project in Brentwood. So we're going to go over that, he's going to do some, uh, give you some information on that whole project. Uh, Assemblyman Ramos is going to speak briefly. And then uh, we'll move on to our regular community meeting uh, information after that, okay? So here's uh, Chief Cameron. Good evening, everyone. I know uh, a, a few people have expressed concerns about us to the, the li about the license plate reader project, and I think that's completely unwarranted, and I think uh, as we discuss it tonight, you'll realize that that's true. But there's a particular group that I think may be especially concerned and I just want to start briefly to address that group and then we'll get into a further explanation of the license plate reader. So without further ado, Buenos dias, para empezar mi gustaría decir que lo siento. No estoy acostumbrado a hablar en español. Facilmente podría traer un traductor esta noche, pero quiero demostrar mi compromiso personal a esta comunidad hablando español. Soy el jefe de la policía del condado de Suffolk. Mi nombre es Stuart Cameron. Vine aquí esta noche para compartir mi mal español con ustedes. Yo creo saber lo que piensan. ¿Él está hablando español? Sí, sí, espero que me entiendan. La verdad es que vine aquí esta noche a hablar sobre el proyecto para instalar las cámaras en Brentwood y Central Island. Creo que quieren la misma cosa que yo, un lugar muy seguro y tranquilo para sus familias. Estas cámaras te ayudarán a conseguir ese objetivo y mantenerte seguro. Nuestro departamento quiere ayudarte y no deportarte. Nos importa por todos. Mi objetivo en vida es ayudar a todas las personas también. Aprender español no es fácil para mí, pero es mi placer hacerlo porque me siento honrado de ser su jefe. Debes saber que estas cámaras son solo para arrestar criminales. No queremos que nadie tenga miedo de estos dispositivos. No hay razón para esos. Queremos usarlas lo antes posible porque pensamos que ellas ayudarán a mantener este pueblo seguro. Ahora cambiaré a inglés porque sé que mi español aún no es muy bueno. Gracias por su atención para mi breve charlar en español. Thank you. So obviously one of the big concerns about the license plate readers in this particular community is that we may use them for immigration purposes and I can assure you that's not the case. But I'd like to just turn the clock back uh, to talk about uh, Assemblyman Ramos's gift and I'll describe it as a gift to this community because that's truly what I think it is. Turn the clock back three years ago when MS-13 violence was on everyone's mind in this community and I think due to the fine work of the men and women that work for me we've really arrested that activity but by no means have we defeated that activity and we continue to make MS-13 arrests in, this, in these communities each and every week. And the number of MS-13 arrests that we've made in 2019 so far have eclipsed the number that we made in all of 2018. So it's pretty clear that they're here and they're trying to make a comeback, but I can assure you our department will not slack off and we will not allow that to happen. So Assemblyman Ramos was very concerned about what was going on in this community, 
So we reached out to then Police Commissioner Tim Sinney and offered us a million dollars to install license plate readers in Brentwood and Central Leicester. So let me briefly describe to you how license plate readers work. And because of uh, Assemblyman Ramos' generosity, with the million dollars, we're able to get install 67 license plate readers in 25 locations. And I can tell you, there is no other community in Suffolk County that has this. And there are other communities that are envious and jealous of what you're getting here because they realize what an assist this will be for public safety. So license plate readers, as I said in Spanish, they're basically cameras. They're mounted on the poles, and as the expression goes, there's never a cop around when you need one. Well, on these locations, on these 25 locations, there'll always be a cop there keeping an eye to keep you safe. So what the license plate readers will do is they record the license plate numbers of the cars that pass. They simply record the license plate numbers, they don't run the plates, they don't decode the plates, they simply record them. The one thing they do do is they run it against a hot list. What's in the hot list? Stolen cars, missing cars that may have a license plate associated with them. So for example, if someone in this community got lost that had Alzheimer's, it's common that someone may drive off in the car and they don't return. We can enter them in the hot list with their license plate number, so if they drive past one of these intersections, we'll be instantly alerted and we can, we can reunite them with their families. That's the type of value that this will have. But they, they amass this database of license plate readers. And to give you a practical example, we're all familiar with what happened in Roberto Clemente Park. People came in and dumped toxic debris in that park over a period of time, and it was not discovered immediately. As I recall, it was discovered when a young child was injured on a piece of rebar that was sticking out of the ground. Then it was uncovered. So to retroactively go back and find out when these trucks with this dangerous material came into your community and dumped it there, and how often they did, it's an extremely difficult task to do retroactively. But if the license plate readers had been there and the trucks had come in to one of the locations that was protected by them, we could have run all the license plate numbers for all the trucks that company had and determined when they came in, how often they came in, and to help the DA make that case. Another example, if we turn the clock back to December of 2017, you may remember that the detectives that in our criminal intelligence section, and I mentioned that because they work for me and I'm proud of the fact that they do, we were alerted to the fact that MS-13 members were riding around the community in a van looking to abduct somebody and potentially kill them. And that van was discovered while they were in the process of abducting somebody. And it's very clear with what they had in that van that their intentions were to abduct this person and kill them. Again, we could have used the license plate readers to be looking for that van at all 25 of these intersections to, to try and apprehend it. So I, uh, I just want to give Assemblyman Ramos an opportunity to speak about it, but that's really what these license plate readers do. And if, if uh, I would equate this to essentially, as I just told the Assemblyman when we came in, as if you gave a million dollars for a community building, uh, you should be, I think, that welcoming to this technology. It's, it's not meant to spy on you, it's solely meant to keep you safe. Assemblyman? Thank you. Please, another round of applause for Chief. He's been, he's been so cooperative and helpful in his attempt um, to bring justice to many of our people in, in our community. Um, some years ago, after that wave of uh, gang murders that we had over here, uh, I wanted to respond with not just rhetoric, I wanted to find some, something of substance to do for our people over here. And I fought up in Albany to try and get um, funds that I was able to secure the million dollars and drawing on my law enforcement uh, experience, many of you guys know I was a cop for 20 years, um, I knew that through technology we could find ways to protect our community. So I came up with this uh, technology after the research that would create a cyber net that would go throughout our community. As, as the chief said, these cameras do not uh, they, they do not uh, issue tickets, they don't, they don't raise revenue, all they do is data mine plate numbers. So if a crime is, occurs, normally there's many uh, crimes that occur in our community, and I, I know as a cop, there's absolutely no information. We don't know who did it. But now the cops would have, would have every car that left that neighborhood at the time of the crime. In the end, if we end up getting some other information, we can connect it, or at least we have a dozen cars of people we can interview, 
to see if there's any suspect. It allows the police to be able to focus. Um, and so this, this, is, this technology is really important. In Freeport, this was implemented in Freeport. It hasn't been in, in, uh, in, in Suffolk County at all. In Freeport, in the first year, there was a 54% reduction in crime as a result of this technology. This is, we're not reinventing the wheel. This is something that works. Not only can they track a criminal, if, if somebody robs your house, if there's a burglar, if there's an assault, something happens to you, and a person flees in a car, and, and we don't know anything, uh, you know, anything but it's, it was a green car. Somebody said it was a green car. We can track, pull out every green car that was in Brentwood and, and, and uh, CI and North Bayshore at that time and start to work on that. If we have a suspect, if somebody did get a plate number, we can not only find out what car left that neighborhood, we can track him wherever he's going and wherever he ends up. This is a, a, a tremendous tool for, for our community to be able to use this. But I, I, gotta, I gotta tell you that I'm uh, dismayed and uh, quite outraged that this was not accepted when it came before the legislature. I it secured this money, state money. This was not money that came from the legislature. It was state money brought down to the county to bring justice to our community, for our community. Um, and as many of you read in Newsday, uh, there were concerns, and in, in order for the county to, to start this program, they had to accept the million dollars. Um, and, and what happened was, they, uh, the legislature decided to table it and not accept it at the time, and push this down the road. We went an entire summer, crime season, Without, without this technology, uh, according to Newsday, um, it talks about the, uh, uh, the million dollars being put in here, and that legislators said they questioned whether the readers should be spread throughout Suffolk County. Because other legislators start drooling about money coming to our community, and they want to put it in their wealthy communities. And this is, this is why I feel outraged, because nobody's looking out for us. This was destined for our communities, and this system does not work if, if we put one or two cameras here and then put the rest in the Hamptons or, 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 or in Huntington or wherever else we put it. It only works if we do a cyber grid throughout our community so the cars get caught wherever they go. This is something I got for us, but apparently people don't want, you know, they, they, we have enough of our resources diverted. All you have to do is drive through wealthy communities and see the government money that's, that's spent over there and compare it to what's spent over here in Brentwood, uh, uh, North Bay Shore, and Central Iceland. I, you know, I secured a million dollars, that was for us. Uh, and if anybody had a question about this, anybody was concerned about it, I haven't received one call from any legislator or anybody. And these things, you don't wait for a vote to decide to research something. I'm a legislator as well at the state level. If I know something's coming up for a vote, I research it and I get all my questions answered. And on the day of the vote, I decide I vote yes or I'm going to vote no. I don't decide, well, I don't know anything about this, so I'm voting no, we're going to kill this. And then as a result, we end up with an entire summer without license plate readers. Justice delayed is justice denied to our people here. So um, uh, I understand that the vote is coming up and I expect that this be accepted by the legislature, that they vote yes, and that we implement this as soon as possible. It's been long enough. I, as the chief said, I secured this several years ago. And in the vetting process, the county took its time supplying what the state needed in order to, to complete vetting. And it's been several years before we finally get this money. Um, in all fairness, we can't blame our present legislator. He wasn't here at the time. But nobody was fighting on the county side to make sure that the compliance was there so that the state can vet this and authorize this money. But that's water on the bridge. The money is here now, and then it gets rejected by, by the legislature. So um, I'm asking our legislators and I'm asking our community to keep an eye on this and make sure that this gets voted in, that it gets accepted. It never should have been delayed at all. Uh, since, uh, I want to tell you that since this vote, we have, we have, um, let's see, and, and, and we also heard that the reason why they want to take this million and spread it out to other communities is because gang violence is down. First off, we had a year where it was terrible. No, nobody has 15 murders in one year. And of course it's down, because 
<laughs> you know, no community has that, but we still have gang violence here. April 16th, uh, uh, March 25th, six MS gang members were arrested for plotting to commit two murders, um, according to Tom Seaman. The plan was to kill by shooting um, with a firearm and butchering him with a machete, or by burning him to death. April 6th, uh, 2019, 33-year-old gang member who sold drugs in several parts of Suffolk County and was involved in shootings in Patrick and in South Central Isaac goes to jail. This is recent gang activity. Uh, uh, August 7th, 15-year-old boy was shot to death in a wooded area in Central Isaac early Wednesday. Police uh, said upon arrival, officers discovered the teen with gunshot wounds. Uh, August 16th, the court in Central Isaac uh, in charge of charges six members of the Blood Street Gang on Long Island for their roles in the drug distribution uh, in our area here. So gang activity is alive and well. Because we don't have 15 the way we had several years ago, it doesn't mean that crime is down. And aside from that, I'm the author of this legislation and the person who secured the money for our community. The intention is for our community, that's where it should go. And if there are any questions, they should definitely be directed to me, the author who had the vision uh, to do this, and not just kill something and deprive our community of this. So I ask all the community to remain vigilant, to make sure this goes to fruition, and uh, our wonderful police department who's been uh, cooperating with, with us and is dying to get this done so that they can be able to do their job and do it well in our community. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Assemblyman. When, when uh, the Assemblyman gave us the money, it actually turned into a grant, and there was some back and forth, and it went into the dormitory authority, and there was applications we had to file, and there were legal reviews, so that's really, that took some period of time, and obviously we want to uh, get these systems up and running as soon as possible, but just, just to mention our legislature, it came up for a vote for public safety, I believe, in July, and there was a, a bunch of people from the public that spoke about it, and they had some questions, so I'll, I'll give credit to the two legislators that are here today, they wanted some answers before they, they passed it. So they immediately scheduled a meeting with the commission I. We addressed their concerns. I think they're very comfortable with the technology now. It passed uh, last week in public safety, which is the first step, and tomorrow goes before the full legislature. I have every confidence that it will pass. And as soon as it passes, I can assure you that we'll immediately begin working with a vendor to get these installed. So I just, do you have a question, sir? Yes, I do. Thank you so much for the work that you're doing. My name is Louis Mendez. I am a member of the Huntington Station Business Improvement District where the legislator uh, used to have a jurisdiction at the time. I am also an ethnic sensitivity trainer at the Nassau County Police Academy. And I, I run two soccer federations, one in Huntington and one in Hempstead. And one in actually in, in Brentwood, the, Hem the, Hunt the Brentwood Soccer Association. So thank you for the work that you're doing. Thank you, Assemblyman uh, Legislator uh, Ramos for doing this, for getting the million dollars. And I'm sure that the legislators, especially the, that I know one of them, I'm sure they'll vote for it and, and, and get this right. But I want to make sure that everyone here understands how important it is for the money to remain here in the district. In Huntington Station, the Huntington Station Business Improvement District runs a camera program. It's one of the most successful ones, and we've never had the opportunity to secure a million dollars. So I would love to take that million dollars <coughs> and take it there. But it's needed here more than it is needed there, although it's still needed there. And we've never used those cameras or allowed those cameras to be used for any purpose for immigration enforcement. So that I'm, I'm happy about because I'm looking out for over 25,000 members that we have in the soccer, uh, the Hispanic Soccer Association. So I want to make sure that the money stays here, and more importantly, that along with the enforcement it goes the education to the community that these cameras exist for their benefit. To make sure that as you spoke Spanish, that you speak other languages, you reach out to the Muslim community, to the South Asian community, and to any other community that sits in the district so that they understand that this is being promulgated. And I'm hoping that both legislators will vote on this. It shouldn't have been delayed, but I thank God that you guys had the knowledge and the ability to do so, so I'm glad, and I thank you for it, and I support the efforts that you're doing. Thank you very much. So I, I thank you for all your work in the community. It sounds like you're very involved yes. in the community, and we, yes. we appreciate that, because that's thank very you. valuable to us as well. And I can assure you, as I said, when Assemblyman Ramos gave us the money, it turned into a grant, and the conditions of the grant are that these cameras will be installed in Brentwood and Central Island. So we can't move them. The only thing we could do is lose them, which I assure you Thank we're you. not going to do. This community needs it more than anyone else on Long Island. But as I said in the beginning, many other communities are very envious of this. This is such a good thing that, that you have this technology watching out for your community 24-7. There's other communities that would love to have it, but they're not getting 
this million dollars. I can assure you that this million dollars is going here without any doubt. Can I just address something? Uh, the issue of privacy, because I understand that uh, there were some people concerned uh, upon, as the chief said, on, uh, when it came before legislature. First, first off, when you're about to vote some, uh, and the public comes, you should be prepared to answer those questions if they are concerned. Uh, the issue of privacy, uh, there is no right to privacy for license plates. In fact, the whole reason why you have license plates is so it could be in the public view. If you cover your license plate, you will get a ticket. If the public can't see it, and these cameras don't do anything different than your eyeball can do. Everybody can see these plates. A police officer can sit down all day and take plate numbers the same way uh, the camera does and, and use it for whatever investigation he can. So those concerns are simple concerns that could be addressed at the time. But delaying this for months is something that, that I don't think should have been done. So I hope at this point we correct what was done and we move forward with justice for our community. Thank you, Chief. Uh, in all due respect to uh, uh, Mr. Ramos, I, I just have to correct one thing. So this resolution came before the legislature, and Legislator Gonzalez is new to the legislature. I'm serving my first. So when the resolution came up, we we had questions. I mean, you've been involved in this, you know, for years trying to get the money, but we had questions. And the community had questions. Uh, Legislator Gonzalez and myself got emails from residents of the community that, that were concerned about what was going to happen with the information about the license plates. So we had to do our due diligence and we had to ask the questions. So we set up a meeting, as the chief of police said, we set up the meeting and we were assured that people's you know, information is not going to be revealed by these cameras and that they're going to be used for just you know, um, the purposes to stop crime and to help fight crime. And both Legislator Gonzalez and I were fine with that explanation. But we didn't, there was no holding this up. When it first came from the county executive's office to the legislature to vote on, the first time we saw it, we had questions. So we asked those questions. It had to be tabled so we could get the answers. I don't think anybody on the legislature is looking to vote against this. I think it's going to probably pass unanimously tomorrow, I would assume. There were people who came and said, hey, I'd like to have some of this money for my neighborhood. Why can't you put some of these cameras? We had our Huntington Station advocates were down there too, and they asked for it also. So we, being new to this and not having seen this before, Ask Chief Cameron, well, there are people that are asking for this money. Where, you know, well, where can this money, where can these cameras go? They can only go in this community. So we are here tonight to make sure that you all know that number one, the information is only going to be used for police purposes and to fight crime. And number two, they're staying in this community. So nobody on the legislature did anything to stop that in any way, shape, or form. We did our due diligence, and tomorrow we're assuming that it should pass. So, thank you. I just want to add to that as well. I mean, listen, I would not have been doing my job, the job that I was elected, if especially the organizations like the New York Civil Liberties Union comes up on the particular day that we table this. Okay? I just want to correct. It, we did not kill it. It was tabled. It was tabled until answers to particular questions from the community were answered. In no way, shape, or form, regardless of what news they wrote, okay, in no way, shape, or form was this money that was allocated for Central Iceland, Brentwood, and North Bayshore was going to anyone. As was said in, in social media to my friends, that's not going to happen, okay? I did not get elected here just to push things through. If the community comes in and asks me, we are afraid, we need answers to particular questions. Is this going to ICE? And especially in this day and age when everyone is so scared. So at the particular time, we tabled it, not to go to any other location, but to this location. 
And as soon as we have the answers, we're going to vote on this. We're going to push this thing through. But the answers to the questions, obviously, we did our job because everyone is here today. Everyone who has any particular questions are going to ask it here today. That's why they're here. That's why we met with Commissioner Hart and Chief Cameron and the leaders of the 3rd Precinct and, we, and Susan and myself. We asked them to have the meeting here tonight just for this purpose so that everybody's questions could be answered as exactly. well. Exactly. So, so this was not, this is nothing premeditated. This is nothing that was done to try to finagle these cameras to go anyplace else. It's never been, never been the case. But unlike, why didn't I call you, Assemblyman? At the same time, if you've seen that I actually tabled it along with the other legislators, I also never got a call from you and say why. You're the author, but we're not here. But we are not here to go against each other or argue. We're here just to make sure that these license plate readers are going to be pushed forward. That's what they were meant to do. I applaud the assemblyman for putting in a million dollars so that our community can maintain and stay safe. That's all I have to say. Thank you. I, think I would like to respond to this because it's important in our community, you know, because many people in our community don't understand the process, they accept what, what is said to them. First off, do you really think that the day of a vote is the first time we get the information on a bill? No. 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 Bills are, sometimes are this, this thick with information. Could you imagine if lawmakers, the first time they see something is then you get it way before and you research it and you answer all your questions before the day of the vote, and then you resolve that, and then if the public comes out on that day, you address it because you should be totally educated. Now, you should not delay this to a community because you didn't do your job and research the bill, right? Now, tomorrow we can work together on things that we agree on, but I'm outraged at what happened right now. Uh, this is not the case, and the process is that an educated uh, legislator should educate himself on the bill, and then on the day of that bill, because he, it's not like they say they don't get a bill one day and they have no clue until it's before them and have to vote on something they have no nothing they know nothing about. Imagine if our democratic system worked that way. So the point is that we're here and now, and I'm here speaking because this is the first time we spoke. I need, I'm the author of this, so any questions should be directed to me. I don't think I should have to call people about their questions. I mean, if you have questions, ask me. I'm here. And we need to get this done, and that's the point. At this point, we need to get it done. The public needs to know. Uh, this hiccup that we had and why we had it and hopefully God God willing it's true and that we get this voted on and that our community gets the technology that we deserve. The right with you man just one second. The bottom line for our, our perspective is it's gonna be voted on tomorrow. I have every expectation that will pass and I can show you assure you that the police department is extremely anxious to get this technology up and running to protect the community, so we'll do the utmost to get it working as soon as possible. Ma'am, did you have a question? Yes, I have a question. I, as a concerned member of the community, um, I, when I heard about this, my concern was, where, what, who was going to see the data? Who was going to have access to the data? Who was going to, who was going to be the owner of the data? Because we didn't know exactly what was, aside from license plates, when you pull a license plate, I'm assuming you pull a lot of other information. So um, let, me, let me explain again how but, it but works. Let me, let me finish my okay, question. And then I, no, I'm sorry. Um, so the concern of the community, because I've spoken to other people about it as well, uh, was why we reached out to the legislators and said, you know, we, we want to know more. We wanted some questions asked. It wasn't because we were saying, no, this is bad. We don't know that it's bad. But we wanted to know other things about it so that we, too, as community members, would know what was going on and feel assured that the data, which if data in the wrong hands can do damage and can hurt innocent people, that was a major concern. So I just. The last thing the police department would want to do is put anything in your community that concerns you. So I don't, I don't really believe there's anything to be concerned about. No, but I'm talking about who has no. access to uh, the data. I'm, if it's just sure. the police department, that's, that's I'll explain that. 
Yeah. So when Assemblyman Ramos gave us this money, he had some conditions. We've had license plate readers in operation of police department going all the way back to 2006. Most of the license plate readers we have are mounted on patrol cars, and you've probably seen them. The initial application for license plate readers was traffic enforcement. We would run license plates. We would determine if the license plates were expired, were, were, expended, uh, were expired or suspended. I'm sorry. It's been a long day. Expired or suspended. But when Assemblyman Ramos gave us his money, he said, I don't want the, license, the fixed license plate readers used for traffic. So this is a standalone project. This will not be integrated with our other license plate reader systems. We're going to take the data. The only thing it will be run against is the hot list, looking for things like stolen cars or missing people. That's it. Otherwise, it will just store the license plates in a separate database, separate and apart from all of our other license plate data, solely for members of the Suffolk County Police Department and only members of the Suffolk County Police Department to do investigations into crimes that are occurring in this community to try and solve them to keep you safer. And clearly, as you heard the Assemblyman speak, his primary motivation was gang violence. And we are very concerned because these communities have had a lot of gang activity in them. And it, it, without our attention, I think it will come back. So this is a wonderful tool for the police department to help keep the gang activity in check, but we can also use it to assist us in solving other violent crimes. And that's the only purpose of these cameras. The only one that will have access to the data is members of the Suffolk County Police Department, and the only thing that we will use it for is to solve crimes in your communities. Did you have a question, ma'am? Out of state plates. It can, it, can, it can capture out of state plates as well. And it, it, when it captures a plate, it takes a photo of the back of the car. So if we're looking for an out of state plate, we can actually pull the license, pull the picture of the car off, and see ourselves that it's not a New York plate. That's how we would resolve an out of state plate issue. I'd like to address what the, um, the, the young uh, lady said in the back there about um, the issue of uh, what it's going to be used for. And that, that was my primary concern in the beginning. As a police officer, I know that uh, too much information can be abused. Um, so the strict protocols that I insisted on are that this can only be used if a crime occurs. It can't just be used by any cop who wants to decide he wants to follow somebody. Uh, or any individual citizen. So a detective would have to pull a case number on an actual crime uh, committed, and the that, it doesn't stop there. The detective must show a nexus between the information he's asking for and the actual crime, how that's relevant uh, to the crime. With that, he would be given access. This will not be shared with immigration. This will not be used for any other reason, just for crimes against our community and, and with an explanation, not just randomly giving out the information. But your question is legitimate. This is what a community should be asking for. And we as, as elected officials should be responding and, and uh, to your fears and what your issues are. Um, I was just gonna ask, like, what about amber alerts and silver alerts? Could it be used to detect like, course, missing yeah, we, children? We or? can put them on the hot list. Anything that's on the hot list will trigger if that license plate goes by. So yeah. I, I believe amber alerts are, in, are definitely on the hot list. So yeah. Of course, the car's not gonna be registered in the child's name, but if they suspect the child was abducted or going, you know, a teenager, and they know the boyfriend has a license uh, or a car or something like that, that can be flagged. Well, generally, wanted, wanted, it won't decode the plate number to find out if the car belongs to a wanted person because it doesn't decode the license plates. But if we put a wanted person in and it's an amber alert and we know they abducted them in a certain type of car, that would very likely be added to the hot list and it would trigger. Just like the example I gave before, if someone with Alzheimer's drove off in a car, Clearly, there's a, it's a nexus to that car. We would add that car to the hot list. So if that car came through the intersection, it would alert us in headquarters that the car was in the area, and we could go out and try and find it. You know, if a car is stolen from you, and it, it's uh, put, you know, it's red flag, and they catch it, they can show exactly where that car is going mm -hmm. to be able to recover, because there's many cameras that are going to catch that car. It's going to be a tremendous tool. Anybody else have any questions? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Um, it's past tomorrow. What's the implementation time? How long do you think before they'll be I, I, I believe we'll start putting them in immediately and the project should be completed within a matter of a few months. And they'll, they'll be up and running probably by close to the end of the year. That's the plan. But by close to the end of the year. So we'll, 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 I know that now the vendor's very anxious to get the system up and running, and we are as well, so we're both extremely motivated. We're going to work well together. A lot of the planning has already been done to, for the installation, so it should move very quickly. And I've answered, you said there's 25 sites that have been chosen. 
how did you choose those sites? The sites were chosen using uh, uh, two methodologies. One was uh, areas where violent crime has occurred before frequently, and one was an, a, uh, a, a method to try and cover the ingress and egress routes, so the major roads into and out of Brentwood and Central Islip. So for the example that I gave you before, where the trucks were coming to the community to dump debris, hopefully we would catch them because it would be on a major road coming in. Or if someone came to the community to commit a crime and they were going back out, and we had a description, hopefully we would be able to catch them as well. Does that answer your question, ma'am? Not really, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. I'm on Okay. Yes, sir. Is this uh, through a bid? Is there going to be a bid for this, or it's, it's, that's already been done? So done. It's, it's ready to go. We have okay. the vendor selected. He's, uh, as I said, he's very anxious to start the installation. Okay. So all the legwork has been done. So as soon as the money is approved tomorrow, sure. we should go to work right away. And and uh, vandalization of the cameras. Is there money for that? Is there uh, what happens if the cameras break down? Weather and all of that. There's the, enough the money cameras, in a million. The cameras are covered under warranty. Sixty-seven cameras will be installed. There's two extra cameras. So there's sixty-nine total cameras. Two are going to be held back in case the camera breaks, so we can swap it out, keep the system running completely, send the camera's broken out to be repaired and get it back and reinstall it. Now, this is seed money. Is the county doing anything additional uh, to, to enhance this, or is there any need to enhance it, year two or three or four? There, there's no money in the budget yet for this. If it, if it turns out that it's something that we should, you know, look to see if we can put more money in for, you know, I can then tell it you, becomes a... You know, I can tell you, we have 67 cameras in the right. bid. We keep changing them. Yeah. So this is going to happen. So, you know, I'm hoping that you guys would eventually, as soon as this is passed and they put it into effect, we can allocate some money in next year's budget to make sure that this is up and running. Otherwise, it'll be lost. It'll be a million dollars lost to... Exactly. You know, I'm sure we all don't want that. We want this to be a, a, a tool that people use as a sample of a great community that needs any tool that it gets. The longevity fire. that's very, very important with these cameras. We already did a, a warranty for several years when we bought the cameras, so they're covered for several years. They are the latest technology, so it's our hope that they won't become obsolete okay. rapidly. We still have, believe it or not, some of the license plate readers, some of the initial license plate readers that we got that we've been able to keep working in service. So, so it is a technology that if you take care of it, it can work for a very long period of time. Chief, How long is the warranty? <coughs> the camera? Four years. One year and then three additional years, I thought. So I think the total is four years. Four years. So we're good for okay. four years. We have another question. Yes. How many are going in each community? There's 67 of them. How many are going in each community? The, the bulk of them are going in Brentwood. Um, I'm not sure of the exact breakdown. Do you know that, John? I, I don't have that at the, uh, at the tip of my They're going in, in Brentwood and Central Isaac. The, the bulk of them are going in Brentwood. I don't have the exact breakdown of, of where they're going. And we obviously, for for uh, operation sensitivity, we don't want to tell you where exactly where they're going because we told you, yeah. not you, we <laughs> trust all of you. <laughs> if you got out, if you knew where they were, people could avoid those intersections and then they wouldn't have any value. But, but I would tell you all, I would tell you. So. <laughs> the point is with, with uh, how many are going to each town, um, you really can't look at it that way because the technology really depends on reading off the community, so major roads that are passed. So it's not, you know, we're going to give 30 here and 30 there. It's a matter of cordoning off both communities in a way that nobody can leave them without having passed these, these cameras. It's more strategic. Than, so we may be overlapping into Hawk and what, what else? The cameras are going in Brentwood and Central Isaac, that's where they're going. They yeah, and okay. the there are roads that actually I can take back roads to get myself to Hop Hop from where I live in Brentwood, and there are roads that I can take to get to Islip back roads. That they're going to factor, take they're gonna factor all that in and figure out the best strategic places to put it. We, we put them in the most strategic places possible, but we, if, if, we just, if we determine that one of them or several of them have been placed in the wrong locations, we can relocate them. That's possible, yes sir. Yeah, how big is the storage? Like how many days back or weeks back can you go back to see video? Uh, we, we, can, we can store the data for a while. We haven't determined, again, this is a standalone project. We haven't determined what the retention rate is going to be for these, how long we're actually going to store them. Um, we can probably store them for as long as we want, but obviously we're not going to store that information forever. But it would be, to me, uh, very unfortunate if for something like Roberto Clemente Park, Let's say we dumped the data after a year. You didn't find out the dumping had occurred until a year. Now we've dumped that data, and we could have had all that valuable information for a prosecution of someone that really victimized this community. So we're going to need to keep 
keep it for a little while. Uh, some of the some of the MS-13 homicides were not discovered fully for a period of time. So sometimes crimes are not uncovered for a period of time after they've been committed. So you do want to keep the data for a little while. Otherwise, we'll have had the means to solve a crime, and we will have deleted it. So we're going to work on that again. This is a completely standalone project. We've never, we've never blanketed a community with this type of technology before. So it's kind of new for us, and it's, it's really an exciting thing for us. I think we're really going to make a real impact with crime here. I know the, uh, uh, I think some of the Ramos mentioned this. I know Miguel Bermudez, the chief in Freeport, and he credits the, the uh, license plate readers in his community with reducing crime by over 50%. So that's what I hope we can do here with these cameras, and I certainly hope that they will help us keep gang activity in check, keep you all as safe as possible. The chief, um, being the, uh, uh, it's under this new technology, but the hardware and the memory has to be substantial in order to keep all the 65 cameras and the memory for an extended period of time. This, this particular project, we're going to be using cloud-based storage, so we're not actually storing them on a server. They're going to be stored on a, on a cloud and vigilant, but again, they're going to be stored on a separate cloud. Gotcha. Ma'am? Seeing that he will not have the red light, uh, yeah. and but, we Red light, red light cameras are a completely separate program. That's not operated by the police department. That's operated by the way. Traffic and Parking <laughs> Violations Bureau. I have, I have, we have nothing to do with that program, so that's completely separate from this program. So it, it's entirely possible that there's a red light camera at an intersection that we have a license plate here, right? That's, that could be possible. Did you have a question, ma'am? Um, say if the camera goes down, how, how will you guys know if and when it goes down? Is somebody going to be monitoring that? Like. I believe there's analytics in the cameras that will alert us that the camera's not functioning properly. And then, as I said, we have two spare cameras. We'll go out and swap it. We'll take the non-functioning camera. We'll send it back to Vigilant. Okay. They'll repair it, and then we'll have it as a spare. Yes, sir. So uh, I, see, I see the legislation meeting tomorrow. Will this be voted on tomorrow? It should be. And I, I, I yeah. hope after what we heard tonight, that we'll pass unanimously, and we can get the money and get right to work. That's Absolutely. really what, what I'm hoping. So, I can only speak for the Democrats. <laughs> Any other questions? I thank everybody so much for their attention. I look, I look forward to...